You guys sent in some questions. I highly suggest you grab some popcorn, grab a cute beverage. Because this video is gonna be an interesting one. This video is a very intimate talk for the girlies. I will be answering all of your burning questions on topics like boys, dating, sex, periods, beauty hacks, shaving down there, and so much more. So now you don't have to work up the courage to ask anybody else. And before we start this video, don't forget you can shop all of my arm candy and my other jewelry on my jewelry brand's website. Chapter number one, sex. How can you be single and content when you're just horny and crave physical closeness? Girl, I feel you. For those of you who don't know, I did one whole year of self-love and this meant not dating, not getting to relationships and being abstinent for a whole year. But this is where the magic of self pleasure comes in. Okay, ladies, you can literally do everything for yourself. If not better than what a man can do for you. Learn your body, invest in a good vibrator, figure out what you like, experiment, what does it take for you to reach the big O. And this is so good because when you do eventually go back to dating, being in relationships, being intimate with others, then you'll actually know what you like and what your preferences are and you'll end up having better sexual experiences with other people. Because you took the time to prioritize your self-pleasure first and that in itself is an act of self-love. But unfortunately, there is a whole stigma around female self-pleasure which is so so disappointing and from so many of the other questions I got I noticed so many people questioning as to whether they should be engaging in self-pleasure or not whether it's right to masturbate and just feeling shame about it overall and to those people I really want to recommend this platform for you cheeks is an online platform which offers a safe space for sexual entertainment and sexual education their goal is to help everybody on their own individual path to sexual liberation and I am so here for it. I think the biggest problem people have when it comes to things like self-pleasure or sex is not knowing how to do certain things, especially if you're inexperienced. Cheeks will literally answer all of your questions for you. They literally have live workshops which will help you intensify your pleasure, learn your body and learn what to do. Cheeks also offers the Pleasure Academy which aims to give you the sex education that you didn't get at school. It comes in the form of an online magazine, podcast, tutorials, live workshops, you name it, it's there. What I find really helpful is that their Pleasure Academy page on their website has a whole bunch of different topics that you can explore, like how to reach the big O, using toys, looking at different sex practices. So if broadening your sexual horizons and answering all of the questions you could possibly have in a safe and inclusive online environment sounds like something you would be interested in, then you can sign up today and become a member of Cheeks. And if you use my code TAM when signing up to Cheeks through that annual subscription, then you'll get seven days of the platform completely free. It's seven days free without any obligation. You can cancel at any time. Head to the link in my description for more info and to sign up to Cheeks today. So in conclusion, who said you needed someone else to feel physically satisfied? Is sex supposed to hurt and how can you make it not hurt? Right, so it's very common for it to hurt the first few times, for example, when you've lost your virginity, but once you've had sex two or three times, it should not hurt any more. That is not normal. If it feels a little bit uncomfy sometimes, and that could just be due to friction, this is where lubrication comes in. So of course, our bodies have natural lubricant, but if you're struggling in that area, maybe you suffer from vaginal dryness, this is where store-bought lubricant will save you, and there is no shame in buying it, okay? It's so normal, it's so common, so many people use it. I would say use that, start slow, communicate with your partner what you like and I definitely think you should be starting with foreplay and not just going right into it because our vagina expands, right? So like especially if you haven't had sex in a while, maybe it's been a week, maybe it's been a month and your vagina is kind of tight and it needs to open up a little bit and lubricate itself to get ready for sex. So if you're going into it straight away, it's going to hurt. It could be caused by something more serious like endometriosis or you could be suffering from vaginal infections like vaginismus for example how much is too many partners i assume big numbers means you have a problem you know i've always been torn on this question because one side of me really thinks it's just not the right choice to be able to make that judgment on somebody's past like i wasn't in your life then i don't know what you were going through i don't know why you made those choices at the end of the day you don't know why people make the choices they make and i don't think it's fair to equate somebody's body count to their character or whether they're good for you or not 
On the other hand, I can see how some people would link like a lower body count to that person has really high standards or they're very serious with their relationships. I do get that. But I think it's a very private matter and just openly asking people with that much courage is kind of weird. Like whenever I dated and a guy would just ask me like that, like, are you a virgin? What's your body count? I'm like... Ew. Plus, I don't even know what like a lot is. To me, like double digits, like touching 10 is like a lot to me, if that, if you want to know my opinion. But to some people, it's not. Like, I'm sure some people out there have like 20, 30, and to me, that seems crazy, but to others, it might be normal. How to deal with yourself when you made the mistake of giving away your virginity. I got a few questions on this, like I lost my virginity to the wrong person, etc. And my answer to this is that I think we need to stop placing so much importance on virginity. And this comes from someone who once did. And don't get me wrong I do think you should be patient with when you're ready to do it for the first time and you shouldn't just give it away to anybody but also if you didn't like your first time or you're having regrets about it don't let that translate into guilt or shame or then having to deal with yourself so you regret your decision and who you poured some of your sexual energy into that's okay and it happens to a lot of people we need to stop stressing about virginity because it is an ancient concept which was literally created to be able to determine a woman's worth or value based on whether she had slept with someone yet or not. Your first time wasn't ideal and I am so sorry for that, but you learned a lesson from it and you will grow from it. And that is all that matters. Opinions on one night stands. I've only been with boyfriends, but I'm now single for the summer and I attach easily. Okay. So I don't engage in hookup culture. I never have and I never will. But I do relate to this question. I went through a phase where I was finally done with being in committed relationships and I was in my single era and it was summer and I was in university and hookup culture is so normalized there where because I was surrounded by it all the time I started thinking like should I just do this because it was just the norm like why am I not doing it and I am so glad that I didn't act on that feeling because I already know sitting here I would have regretted it because it's never been a part of my values I don't see one night stands as liberating I see it as damaging and extremely risky women think with our hearts right we attach easily a especially when it comes to having sex. Men don't think the same. They can detach very easily during the process and then instantly there's this mismatch and that's where so many women are then left with lower confidence and lower self-esteem, worrying about a guy and chasing him. When is he going to call me? Because we had this one magical night when the guy's not thinking about you in the same way. You'll instantly feel emptier afterwards because you kind of feel like you gave a piece of yourself away and you kind of gave a little bit of your power away. Also, it's a literal transfer of energy with a stranger, someone you barely know, someone who hasn't earned your time and your energy and respect, why would you want to give that to them? That is just my opinion. There might be some women who feel empowered from hookup culture. I personally have never heard their stories, but how long should you wait before having sex? I think when you're either exclusive or in the labeled relationship, which will be within the first three months. I fully think that you should make the man wait. Like he has to earn it. He has to wine and dine you first to be able to have the privilege of being intimate with you. Plus it's the perfect test because it says and shows a lot about his character if he is willing to put in the time and it shows that he's not all about that one thing. Like he is actually interested and committed in spending time with you and getting to know you. And he doesn't even care that you're gonna make him wait three to four months because he's like, it's fine. I'm loving spending every day with you until then. How do you feel confident in your body? I'm skinny, but guys like thick girls. Well, it's funny you ask that because I got a question from another girl for this same video who said I'm really insecure about my curvier body type because I constantly feel self-conscious during sex and like I should be skinnier. And the reason I brought that up is because it just goes to show us girls make up these problems in our heads. We think guys really care and they're fussy and they have this like set type of what they want in a girl. No, they don't, okay? As soon as a guy is in a room with a naked girl, he is over the moon. He doesn't care what she looks like. He doesn't care if she has cellulite, if she has big thighs, small thighs. If you have ever been intimate with a man, has he ever asked you to leave the room? No. And would he ever? No, because men are not that picky. Us women are so used to picking out all of our flaws in, in the mirror, learning new beauty rituals and routines on how to be more attractive. Men don't think like that. 
but on a day-to-day -day basis if you want to maximize your body confidence I would say it probably starts with clothes like knowing your body type and which clothes are gonna look the most flattering on you so for example I have a much skinnier frame so I won't wear certain dresses or certain tops that kind of accentuate my cleavage because I have no cleavage so it just doesn't look right on me and an amazing tip that I would use whenever I got insecure about not having curves is looking at celebrities and influencers who share your body type and basically curating your TikTok feed your Instagram feed to people who look like you I could choose to fixate on the fact that I don't have a huge bum and I don't have a huge bust but neither does Ariana Grande she doesn't care so why am I you need to practice the art of staring at your naked body in a mirror for at least five minutes a day did you know there's an actual like statistic out there where apparently women cannot look at their naked bodies in the mirror for more than five seconds without wanting to look away because if you feel insecure and shame around your body then you don't look at it in the mirror and you try to hide it with clothes and you don't show it in pictures and instead what your eyes are constantly seeing is pictures of what your body should look like on social media or comparing your body to just fixating your vision on what other people's bodies look like in real life or on social media and then your perception is completely skewed because you're always used to looking at a body that isn't yours appreciating bodies that aren't yours do's and don'ts for your first time don't have because everybody around you is and you're scared of turning into a 25 year old virgin there's no shame in that don't do it because you feel like you'll get left behind or it's cooler to lose it at a younger age because you will regret it when you're older do communicate with your partner or your date anytime before or after you choose to get intimate learn each other's preferences don't disconnect with your body just to connect with his do prioritize and learn about your own pleasure instead of dismissing it because it's easier don't get in your head about how you or your body looks do start staring at your naked body in a mirror every day do pee right after sleeping with someone do start at a slow pace and don't feel embarrassed about it don't try to recreate pornography or live up to his fantasies because you will ruin the entire experience for yourself and him in the long run do spend majority of the time on foreplay right at the beginning and lastly do use a period tracker you need to know when your neck's gonna bleed when your ovulation is how do you know when to trust a man for sex i lost my virginity to a boy who i thought i could it's a simple answer make them wait in the time that you're making them wait and you're pushing it and you're pushing it and it's been like a month or two and you're not giving it to them see how much they suggest it see how much they ask for it See how much they sexualize you in that time. If they are doing any of the above, they are not worth it and you should not trust them because it shows that their mind only revolves around one thing and they do not respect you as a person. They should be in it to spend time with you and to genuinely get to know you. And the last question for the sex chapter. What do you think about sex before marriage? I got a lot of questions around this and around virginity and like saving yourself and all of that. And honestly, I think to each their own, everybody's different. I personally wouldn't do it. I really think that sex is as big of a part into a relationship as the love and care part is. And I, I'm just the biggest believer that you should do everything with someone before you get into a marriage with them that includes traveling the world with them arguing with them living with them meeting their family all of the experiences and of course that includes sex because sex is a huge part of a relationship and what if you have great chemistry and you love and care for each other but sexually you don't and you don't align and it, and it doesn't work you don't want to spend the rest of your life having to deal with that so that's why personally it doesn't work for me but when people say you know I'm a virgin and I'm saving myself for like the one and for marriage I think that's a beautiful thing to be in a long-term relationship with someone willing to wait until you get married because in that process you're really just prioritizing the love and the care that you have for each other and I think that's wonderful chapter two boys <laughs> my ex still keeps drunk texting me from time to time how was he still texting you you should have him blocked on every single thing. I'm talking Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, Gmail, everything. His phone number, he can't text you, he can't WhatsApp you, call you, nothing. Zilch, zero. I did that to my most toxic ex who literally wouldn't leave me alone. And then he continued to email me every few months just to make sure he was just staying in the back of my mind. Yeah. And when you block someone an email, they still keep coming through in your spam folder, right? So then my commitment to not allowing this man a place in my life was I spoke to my IT friend and they basically helped me where anytime he tried to email me, it would go to this other place. Like it would immediately get deleted. I would never see it and it would never actually reach my inbox or my spam folder. That should be everyone's level of commitment 
to their exes trying to reach out. They're gonna keep annoying you and you can't control that. But it is your responsibility to prevent any potential form of communication with them. And that is in honor of the true love of your life, yourself, your future, and your peace. Okay, so I like this guy, but he has a girlfriend, but it's long distance, should I flirt or back away? back away please please back away because girl imagine this was your man imagine this was your man and there was another girl contemplating if she should flirt with him or not and from this question i am getting the vibe that your concern here is that it's long distance and not the fact that he has a whole girlfriend my boy best friend likes me and i like him too but we are scared to ruin the friendship this is a toughie. It is better to try and fail rather than spend any more time wasting your life wondering what if. Connections with the people that we adore the most come to an end, okay? Nothing is meant to last forever. But if you feel so strongly for someone, it is your responsibility to act on that urge because what if something magical happens? What if it turns out better than you could have ever imagined? Me personally, if I was in the situation, I would charge at that desire. Like imagine yourself in five years time if your boy best friend now is in a serious relationship and you're like, damn, like what if that could have been me? And maybe if I just said something, things would be different. You don't want to be in that situation. If it breaks, let it break knowing that you gave it your all with all of your courage how do i be a lover girl in hookup culture solo date self-love and stop normalizing hookup culture listen i didn't even realize that hookup culture was common until i went to university and then it was all around me and all of a sudden it affected my mindset i thought i'm never gonna find a serious boyfriend boys mindsets are so screwed up all they want is sex no one's ever gonna commit to me i'm never gonna find true love yada 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 then i cut off all of the toxic people in my circle at university i graduated moved back to my hometown basically isolated myself although i still spent time with my really good friends focused on myself my career leveling up becoming my best self and then my mind is clear again. And hookup culture and one night stands were no longer normalized. Now I could understand how many men would be out there that don't engage in one night stands, that truly value having high standards and being in a serious relationship with a woman because they understand the importance of that and the value it will bring into their lives separate yourself from the hookup culture i'm always going to be an advocate for focusing on yourself but if you want to actively date if you want to approach guys and you're on dating apps make your intentions clear you have no time to waste okay you need to say i want this to be exclusive i'm looking for a serious relationship i'm not one to want to have intercourse straight away that is completely fine and safe and good of you how do you know if he's the one this is my favorite question because oh my god did i spend years wondering this and wondering this i do you know how many times i've googled this question and google does not help but i finally have the answer so there are two parts to the answer to this question part one is the signs okay i think you know when he's the one when he truly loves you what does love mean though what is true love how do we know that someone genuinely loves us if they follow the seven components of real love. This was theorized by Bell Hooks in her book, All About Love. You can only love someone if you give the seven components of love to them. If you give them six, you don't truly love them, okay? You can't like any of these. So the seven components are care, affection, recognition, respect, trust, commitment, and honest and open communication. I want you to write down those components I just said and then next to each term I want you to write down what does that term mean to you because it's going to manifest in different ways in people's lives. What does it mean for someone to care about you? How would they show that they respect you? And then one more sign that I want to mention is if your inner child feels safe with them. Not your current self, your inner child. And I mean the goofy, unfiltered, imperfect version of you gets to come out and play and be free and feel fully seen and accepted and loved and cherished. So this is not about the entire relationship being perfect. You're still going to get triggered. You're still going to get upset. You're still going to have to have difficult conversations. But when this person is the one, it's when they are committed to learning you inside and out every single day. It's when they are committed to the lifelong, never-ending journey of learning how to love you as you change and you evolve. It's a mission and a commitment to one another to want to lessen each other's sufferings throughout your lifetime. To be there through thick and thin. And part two to this question 
is you make them the one. Every single relationship needs work. Not every single relationship is perfect. Sometimes you need to kind of fill in each other's flaws and weaknesses and show up for each other. And in these times, in these hard times, you have to work at it to make them the one, okay? You triggered me because of so-and-so or I feel misunderstood because you said this or that. I'm gonna now sit down and communicate with you. I need you to do this. I don't want you to say this because, or X, Y, or Z. I know you did this to try and make me feel loved, but that's not how I feel loved. I want you to do this instead. How to approach a guy. I got so many questions on how do you start talking to a guy that you like, all of that. Love this question. It is a tricky thing to get your head around. Step number one is confidence. You cannot let a man have the power in this conversation because the second that they realize that you're nervous or you're kind of shy, they're gonna take advantage of you. Mm -mm. You need to have the power in this situation and the key to this is faking it till you make it. You better strut over there. You better look them in the eyes. I don't care if in your head you are screaming with fear. You're gonna look them in their eyes. You're gonna embody the baddest, sexiest, most confident version of yourself and you're gonna look at them and you're gonna be like, hi, how are you doing? Or the best way to start is by complimenting them. And this is why people get it twisted. Just cause it's a random guy, a guy you like, doesn't mean you treat the conversation any different to how you would approach a stranger that you're trying to make friends with. The immediate way to disarm someone is to compliment them. So you go up to him and you pick something that he's wearing or doing to start and stimulate the conversation. You have to treat it so casually like it's nothing. Like you're like, but I'm just talking to you. You're just another person. Even though on the inside you're like, this is the hottest person I've ever seen and oh my god, I want you to have my babies. You can't let them think that and you can't treat it like that. All of those thoughts need to go away for a second. This is just another person. The worst thing you can do in this situation is put them on a pedestal. And then you need to be lighthearted and funny. That's what they're going to find the most attractive. And most importantly, be yourself. Don't do yourself a disservice by trying to be something you're not because that's not going to work out well for you in the long run. And you need to talk like you just don't give an F. Especially the fact that you don't care how you're perceived because you shouldn't. I don't care what a guy thinks of me. I don't care what your perception is of me. I like you. You piqued my interest. So I'm just going to go to see what you're about. Maybe ask you a few questions. See if you reciprocate that interest back to me. If you don't, no biggie. How to make someone value you. You can't. You can just see your own value. And if someone else can't, that's on them and then it's your responsibility to walk away from that. Not everyone is for you. Everybody values different things, right? People have different hobbies and different career interests and different things they look for in friendships and relationships. So how can you expect yourself to be for everybody? You can't. So of course there are gonna be some people out there who don't value you. That's normal. That does not diminish your worth or how desirable you are but it goes to show that you can't change anybody's mind about you, nor should you try to. You should only be with and make an effort with somebody who you don't have to prove yourself to. Somebody seeing and appreciating your value comes naturally. It should not have to be forced or made. Is right person wrong time real? Oh, I love this question and I used to preach about this on the internet, okay? I used to have this answer, right? This go-to answer and I love this answer, but then I met my boyfriend and I was like, Right person, wrong time isn't real because the right people are timeless. Time isn't even a factor to the people who just love you and care about you and appreciate you inside out, okay? They will put in the work, they will do the long distance, they will make time for you, they'll work on their time management skill, they'll try and fix their attachment style for you, they will do whatever it takes to make it work for you. Why would they use time as an excuse when they know they found the one? You're their person, right? You, if you are the right person, why would they let you go? You would have chased them, you would have changed up your schedule, you would have communicated through the problem and tried to come up with a solution as to how you could have made it work, but you didn't. So no, they weren't the right person because for the right person, for your soulmate, you would do everything for the chance to be with them. And then this is where things get complicated. That was always my mindset. And then I met my current boyfriend. Nobody knows this, I haven't even said this on the internet, but everyone wants to know how we met. He came into my life at the six month mark of my self love year. And he expressed his interest in me, and he wanted to date me, and he wanted to be with me. And I said no, I was like, I'm not ready, and I have a lot of healing to do. And I, I wasn't with him. But I maintained a friendship with him. Then my self-love year was over and I was dating again. So he expressed his interest to me again. And I was like, yeah, sure. So we dated for a while and then I, I cut things off because I was getting triggered and I had an avoidant attachment style and I could not deal with being in a relationship, let alone a healthy one. Being in my first ever healthy relationship triggered me so bad. It felt so uncomfortable to me. 
I didn't like it. Instantly I was like, I can't, this is boring, you're not the right person for me, this doesn't feel thrilling, where's the roller coaster of emotions, where's the chaos? And we went our separate ways. And then by fate, two months later, we were in the same place at the same time. I looked to my right, I was in a crowd of 40,000 people at a festival. And he's standing right there. And I was like, and he was like, the day after he texted me and I texted him and we went on another date and since then we've been together and we've been boyfriend and girlfriend. But initially, we both thought about each other right person wrong time because we treated each other well, we had really great dates, I just wasn't ready for him. And so I could be the kind of person that's like, oh, well he's always been my person because we're in a happy loving relationship now but last year was like the wrong time and I wasn't ready for him. But it's not true. And this is why I still believe that right person, wrong time isn't real because I was a different person then. I was still the wrong person for him and he was the wrong person for me back then. I wasn't meant for him. I wasn't even willing to put the work in for him back then. So he shouldn't have been with me and it wasn't right person, wrong time. I evolved into the newest version of me and only then were we compatible. Time was never a factor. Sometimes it's about not aligning with that version of a person because they're not putting that effort in for you. I liked a boy. He talked to me for six months and then woke up and chose to say, I don't want to commit. Oh my God. You shouldn't even let it get to two months without having the exclusivity or relationship conversation. And if that sounds crazy to you, then you have officially been taken over by this whole stupid concept of situationships, I'm sorry. Next time you're in a talking stage with someone, by the end of the first month, you need to pluck up the courage to sit down with them and have the conversation. What are your intentions? Where is this going? Do you see us being in a relationship? Yes, okay, let's be exclusive. Are you seeing other people? Why are you still seeing other people? I think we should be exclusive with each other. You need to say everything and lay your cards on the table. I don't care if it feels uncomfortable or awkward or you're shy. Then you're prioritizing another person's comfort who's gonna break your heart in six months over your own peace and valuable time. You owe it to yourself to sit with that temporary discomfort and lay out your cards and your intentions so you can protect your future. Is it normal my boyfriend asks me for nudes because I feel like he only uses me for it? No, it is not normal. Please leave, okay? Whoever sent this question, I'm looking at you personally right now. I am begging you, begging you, me, Tam, I am begging you, leave ASAP. That gut feeling is there for a reason. I promise you, there is no way you are wrong in this situation. You are going to come across a wonderful man one day who is gonna give you everything you could have ever dreamed of, give you all the respect and all the princess treatment, and will never ask you to send naked pictures of yourself for his pleasure when you do not want to. So please do not prolong the process of finding the man that actually deserves you for this guy that you're currently having to deal with. In my personal opinion, I think it's really important for the guy in the relationship to have self-control and so intimacy is really only reserved for when you're together in person and you feel like it and you consent to it and you are not obligated to have intercourse or to get intimate with him every single time you see him because he does just value just talking to you and just taking you on a date without expecting any of that in return every single time. I promise you that's normal, not this. My heart is actually racing because it genuinely pains me to know that there are girls out there that are doing that because they think that's what they should be doing when it most definitely is not and at the same time it angers me that there are so many men out there who feel entitled to that and feel so comfortable asking girls for that. It's disgusting. I'm going to take a breather and then I'll come back to the next question. Welcome back. Last question for this chapter. How to be independent in a relationship? I love this question. So important. More people need to talk about this. And as the queen of self-love who is now in a relationship, you already know I got the best answers. So step number one is solo dating. Take me for an example. I went for a solo date this morning. I went to another city. I got my nails done. And then I went out for lunch. I got myself a Starbucks, all of that. And I went on a date, date with my boyfriend three days ago. In the same week, one date with my boyfriend, one date with myself because I will still always prioritize myself. I don't care if my boyfriend gets me flowers and wines and dines me, I'm still gonna do it for myself. I am my own first love, I am my own best friend. That does not go away just because now I'm in a relationship with somebody else. This relationship here is forever guaranteed no matter what. So many people make the mistake of giving up the time they once committed to their hobbies when they were in their single era to now giving that time to dating their boyfriend. Go on date nights, 
but make sure you have carved out at least one hour minimum a week, okay? That's super easy. You can find that time to do what you used to love. Whether it's even just watching Netflix all on your own, whether it's reading a book, writing something, drawing, painting, going on a walk. Same with scheduling another hour once a week for family or friend time. It is so important to realize you can receive and give love and care to all of the other people in your life. And there are different types of love and care and affection you can receive from these people. Chapter three, periods. First question for this chapter, how to hurt less on your period? Boring answer, but truly the biggest thing that helps, I know, I know you don't wanna hear it, I know, is exercise and a good diet. So like three times a week, move your body, do some intense exercise. This is gonna help balance your hormones. The reason that we have bad periods is due to our hormonal imbalance. So a lot of these tips are about balancing your hormones, right? So exercise, good diet. This is all down to gut health. The key to good gut health is avoiding processed foods, okay? I know when it's our period week, we crave all of the bad foods. I want a McDonald's every single day for dinner. I know that feels comfortable, but you are doing yourself so much worse. No processed foods, okay? You really wanna cut down on the added sugar as well because that's gonna cause further inflammation in the body. Further inflammation in the body then leads to those PMS mood swings. So I'd fully recommend going on Google and typing in low inflammation foods, how to reduce inflammation. So a really good way of doing this is consuming more omega-3s through foods um, or taking a supplement. Same with zinc. Consuming turmeric is really good at reducing inflammation in the body. So I'll put this in a smoothie in the beginning in the morning The more inflammation you have in your body the worse your cramps are gonna be this is called a UU I will type it on the screen so you can google it. This is the only water bottle you should be using It's the only one that worked obviously it's so long it goes all around you But then it has this tie where you tie it around you and because it's so long this stays hot for I wanna say about five hours. And also seven plus hours of sleep really helps with balancing your hormones, okay? When you get a bad night's sleep or you're trying to do an all nighter or whatever, the stress hormone cortisol will then be raised in your body for the next three days. Hormone imbalance and then worse period. A hormonal imbalance can also be fixed by consuming much more protein and veggies. And then if you are craving sweetness, you have to train your palate to start appreciating dark chocolate. I know I used to hate it, but it's so good for you. It's filled with antioxidants. Ch dark chocolate is the only type of chocolate that's actually good for you during your period. And that's actually gonna help reduce inflammation in the body. But drink raspberry leaf tea. Everyone says it helps with cramps. It helps with all of the bad PMS symptoms. So if you can find it in your local store, buy it and drink it. Cause if I could, I would. Last question for this chapter is PCOS advice. I do not suffer from this, so I can't comment on this, but I went on Instagram and asked you guys to send me creators that can educate you guys on this and how to live with PCOS, make it better and all of that. So I'm gonna leave that on the screen for you guys. I highly recommend you guys follow these creators cause I checked out their pages and honestly, they are so good at what they do. Chapter four, the final chapter, beauty advice and tips. Tips for vaginal health. Let her breathe, please. When I learned this, it was a game changer, okay? Don't wear underwear to sleep. I know it might sound a bit like, whoa, and it did to me when I first heard of it, but nobody talks enough about how you need to let your vajay breathe. The vagine is self-cleaning, okay? She needs that air, she needs that space. When you're wearing tight underwear all day long, you're wearing tight gym leggings, tight clothing, you are literally creating an environment for more bacteria and vaginal infections to happen. We don't want that. Wear loose pajamas and no underwear to bed every night and try to go commando whenever you can. Any feminine hygiene products out there, just for the purpose of marketing and money. None of it is good for you, do not trust it. All you need is to wash your body down as you normally do. You can clean the labia, do not go inside. None of that needs cleaning. Okay, you're literally gonna upset the pH of your vagina and then you're gonna have a bunch of issues as a result. Don't spray any body spray or perfume down there. Try as much as you can to switch from those lacy lingerie type under underwear and like thongs and switch to loose breathable cotton underwear on a day-to-day -day basis and that's going to do so much better for your vagina being able to breathe. Change your pad or tampon regularly. Personally, I don't do tampons. I don't like the thought of having something inside me all day. I'm just more of a pad girly. When you work out, change out of your sweaty gym clothes ASAP. Okay, ASAP, because all of that sweat, all of that moisture, once again, is just breeding a better environment for vaginal infections to happen. How to get rid of hair down there. So I personally shave, and my God, do I hate it. It's so frustrating. I'm gonna start laser down there soon. First off, shaving cream 
absolutely essential. Do not skip on this. We don't want razor burn down there. Okay, imagine this is the vagine and this is, the vagine is here, okay? And this is all your hair. You're gonna take the razor and you're gonna go down with the grain of the hair. Then you're gonna go left and then you're gonna go right and then you're gonna go up against the grain of the hair. That should be last, okay? And this is just a technique I learned over social media. A lot of people do it just to help with um, avoiding ingrown hairs and just having the proper shaving technique. And what I like to do is add aloe vera gel onto that area to prevent any razor burn or bumps because it can get very irritated down there. Next question, how to lighten hyperpigmentation. A lot of people asked about this like around the mouth, um, around your eyes, um, your armpits. Around your mouth, you wanna use this ordinary product. It's called the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin. It does not break you out as long as you only use it in this area. Stop using canned deodorants. I'm all for this anyway. Start switching to a natural deodorant. Um, everybody's been raving about the ordinary glycolic acid as a natural deodorant after you shower, just a little bit on a cotton pad, and that will kind of help remove any body odor. I've been doing it, works. And apparently it lightens the skin there, but I can't comment that. But for hyperpigmentation anywhere, so even eyes, Truly this works, because I used this on my acne scars on my face like years ago, I haven't done it. It's a turmeric mask, okay? This is an Indian hack, okay? The Indian girl, you should know this. So in a bowl, you want to mix a little bit, like, like a little bit of turmeric, not too much or you're gonna turn yellow. Turmeric with some Greek yogurt, a little bit of water, some chickpea flour, mix it up, it's gonna form into a paste. And then you're gonna put that here, here, maybe on your knees, my knees are dark. Under your eyes, around your mouth, you're gonna let it sit for like five minutes and then wash it off. And it should dry down in like, into like a mask maybe. Okay, last question. I just got so many about body hair, feeling insecure about body hair and removing it. I'm all for removing it or keep your body hair. But some people remove their body hair and they're saying to me like I still feel really shameful about it and like unattractive because it grows back dark or it grows back too quickly or thick. So does mine. Okay, so do you know, right, I shaved my fingers this morning <laughs> because my knuckles are hairy because I'm a brown girl. So I have hairy knuckles, okay? I have hair everywhere. I had like a close-up picture that was taken of my ear to take a picture of one of my earrings and there's like little hairs all across my ear. I was like, oh my god. But I feel no shame about it because we're human and it's natural and it happens. This is all gonna grow back by tomorrow. It happens to me every single time. There is no shame in it. You are still so beautiful. You are completely normal for having that problem. There is nothing wrong with it. And with that, we're gonna end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a little bit different. I loved it. Just like talking to you guys super casually. If you did, Thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what you liked about this video because I would love to know for future video ideas and stuff. Um, don't forget that I do have a podcast on Apple and Spotify so you can listen to all of my YouTube videos in audio format. Link is in the description, as is my jewelry brand. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you. Bye.